next um, presentation is going to be uh, Dr. Rachel Supermanian, who's another uh, first year resident. She's going to be talking about continuous renal replacement therapy, CRRT, as it's superior to intermittent hemodialysis in critically ill patients. Uh, so first I'll introduce the topic. Um, hemofiltration was first described um, in the 1940s by Malinaw and Corzon, um, and it was actually to treat chronic renal failure in dogs. The first artificial kidney uh, was developed in 1947 by William Hoff um, in Holland, and then in 1966, um, like the era of hemofiltration began as like new polymers, uh, synthetic polymers were developed. Um, which were a lot more biocompatible and allowed um, ultra-high filtration. And then in 1977 in Germany, um, this guy named Kramer, he accidentally like punctured the artery instead of the vein and he came up with continuous um, arterial venous hemofiltration, uh, which I'll refer to as CABH. So this new form of dialysis um, allowed continuous removal of solutes and water. Um, it kind of is more compatible with like a normal kidney um, as our kidneys are continuous um, as opposed to regular dialysis which is just every few days um, for like three to four hours um, and this technique was simple it lacked a pump um, it allowed systemic circulation to be a little more stable and it was just an easy way to manage fluid overload um, so that's why it was widely adopted but there were some issues gaining arterial access, there were complications, so they went towards a venous-venous pump-driven method in the 1980s, um, and this was soon adopted to a lot of critically ill patients, um, especially like outside of the U.S., in Europe, Australia, mostly in uh, ICU, they only use CRRT. Um, so just in general, 5% of patients admitted to the ICU uh, receive CRRT, I mean receive um, renal replacement therapy. Um, and the mortality is around 60%, so it is, um, it's a very life-threatening condition. Uh, so right now we currently have two modalities to choose from um, in critically ill patients. One is just the standard intermittent hemodialysis. This is just the regular dialysis we use in patients um, with end-stage renal disease versus this continuous renal replacement therapy. Uh, here's just an image. Um, it shows uh, this double lumen catheter, um, and it shows like the dialysis and the effluent, um, and the dialysis fluid is passed through this membrane where it filters solutes. So there's a lot of proposed advantages of CRRT. That's why it's so widely adopted in the critical care. Um, so I'll just go over these. It has, it's proposed to have better solute uh, clearance, azotemic control, better correlation of acid base and electrolyte disorders. Um, it allows patients to have greater hemodynamic stability as it is uh, like continuous um, and low dose. Also, nutritional support can be fully pursued in um, continuous renal replacement, which is not always the case um, with intermittent he hemodialysis. Also proposed to have um, enhanced clearance of like uh, inflammatory mediators, which contribute a lot to sepsis, um, but there is some controversy over that. It's also believed to reduce time um, to renal recovery uh, function and result in increased survival. Um, so that's basically what I'll, what I'll be focusing on in this talk is does it actually lead to increased survival. Um, it has been shown to have a less effect on intracranial uh, pressure and it's the preferred modality in t traumatic brain injury. Um, so this study by Bellamo in 1993 uh, this kind of established that CRT is superior to intermittent hemodialysis. So he compared, um, pro he pro prospectively studied a group of critically ill patients with acute renal failure uh, treated with CRT to a historic control of patients uh, treated with conventional dialysis, either intermittent hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis. Um, he was just looking at survival, if there was a survival benefit. Um, so here's his results, if you guys can see that. Um, it shows in the CRRT group compared to the regular dialysis group. Um, 
better control of azotemia and hyperphosphatemia, um, but just note that the plasma urea concentrations were lower in the uh, CRRT group than in the conventional group. He, um, and these are the results on survival. Um, so in this group, uh, with two to four failing organs in Apache 24 to 29, there was a significant survival benefit that he found. Um, but when you look at other patients, less sick and more sick patients, there was not a significant survival benefit. Um, so this study was pretty novel. It basically established that CRRT um, was superior to intermittent hemodialysis in the ICU and had improved survival. Um, but the control group was studied retrospectively. Um, it was a historical control. It was non-randomized. Also, the control group was between 1982 to 1988, um, so they were not able to benefit from advances um, in ICU management, non-dialysis advances. Also, there's two different membranes used. Um, so this conventional dialysis group used cellulose membranes. Um, those have been thought to lead to increased inflammatory markers and decreased time to uh, renal recovery, while the continuous group used these biosynthetic polyacrylonitrile membranes, um, which are a lot more compatible, and that could have contributed to the increased survival seen in this study. Okay, so now I'm gonna review these five studies, which basically say the opposite of what the initial study said. Um, so let's just go through them. Uh, first is this study done, a multi-center randomized control study. I think it was done in four different ICUs in San Diego. Um, it compared intermittent hemodialysis to CRRT for acute renal fa failure in the ICU. Um, the main issue with this study is the two groups were unbalanced for um, their, a lot of things, like the CRRT group had more males, it had more hepatic failure, higher Apache score, um, and higher number of failed organ system. It also excluded patients with a MAP less than 70. Um, but this study found that CRRT actually had a much higher mortality than intermittent hemodialysis. Um, for all cause and in hospital, um, but this change in mortality could be attributed to um, the CR2 group had a lot sicker patients um, explaining the higher mortality. And all of these um, covarities that I mentioned, they all were independently related to ICU mortality. So after they stratified for this, they didn't see a difference in mortality rates. Um, and in regards to recovery of renal function, function and length of stay, there was no difference. Um, the next study is by Augustine um, and his colleagues. Um, this was a randomized prospective trial, 80 patients, 40 received CRRT, 40 received intermittent hemodialysis, um, studied in the ICU. Between 1995 to 1999, they tried to have as much similarities as possible between the two treatment groups, um, and they tried to have the same MAP and vasopressor support. Um, just to note that nine out of the 40 CRRT crossed over to the IHD group because of recurrent clotting. So the results of this study did not show a significant difference in mortality or renal recovery between these two groups. Um, the only difference they found was in volume removal hemodynamics. Um, the CRRT group um, had a lot more fluid that was able to be removed versus the intermittent hemodialysis group remained net positive. Um, also, the intermittent hemodialysis group required a lot more um, pressors and they had a significant MAP change, but despite these um, findings, there was no change in survival. This study is from Bern, Switzerland. Um, it's pretty similar. It compares intermittent hemodialysis with CVVHD. Um, in a tertiary hospital uh, comparing 70 versus 50 patients. And they wanted to see, again, does CRRT reduce in-hospital mortality, length of stay, or recovery of renal function? Um, and once it was randomized, the patients continued their assigned forms of um, renal replacement therapy um, until they were discharged then they could, from the ICU, then they could switch. So this study showed that ICU mortality between the CRT and intermittent hemodialysis um, was pretty similar. It was 34 versus 38 percent. 
um, was not significant. The in-hospital mortality was also um, very similar between the two groups. Um, and there was no differences in like the types of nutrition the patients received, the, um, the amount of blood or fluids. Uh, they tried to match that equally. Um, and the amount of like circulatory shock, MAP less than 65, did not differ between these groups. Um, and 64 patients survived full renal recovery, uh, meaning like they don't require dialysis anymore. Um, there was 50% in CRT42 versus uh, intermittent hemodialysis, but that was not a significant difference. Next um, is this study, I think it's from France. Um, this is from 2007, um, and this was one of the largest um, randomized controlled trials comparing CRRT and, uh, continue and intermittent dialysis, uh, looking at survival benefit again. This is from 21 ICUs in France over these four years. It had 360 patients. This was uh, by far one of the larger trials I've seen. Um, but just note that patients in the CRRT group could switch to intermittent hemodialysis um, once multi-organ system dysfunction resolved or after three weeks. But this table pretty much summarizes everything they found in this trial. There's really no significance in survival at 28, 60, or 90 days. There was no difference in um, the number of days they required dialysis or the length of stay. Um, and after discharge from the ICU, 7% of the CRT versus 10% of the intermittent hemodialysis uh, remain dialysis dependent. Okay, and the last study I will talk about is a meta-analysis. This includes all of the previous four trials I talked about, um, in addition to uh, like 11 other studies. Uh, this is from 2017, so it's pretty recent. It wanted to compare um, just uh, patients in the ICU again with acute kidney injury. They, wanted, they compared CRRT, intermittent hemodialysis, and SLED, um, which is sustained low efficiency dialysis. That's actually what we do here in our ICU. Um, it's basically like intermittent hemodialysis, but it's more continuous and it tries to be um, like a bit like CRRT, but it's not. Okay, so these results um, so on the left is the in-hospital mortality of CRRT versus intermittent um, hemodialysis. And as you can see by this chart, there's really no um, significance in regards to mortality. Um, the risk ratio is one. Um, on the right is ICU mortality, comparing CRRT to intermittent hemodialysis. Um, again, there's no significant survival benefit seen here. Risk ratio is 1.1. Um, and there's another graph that shows uh, dialysis dependence. Um, and the results are pretty much the same. No difference between the two groups. Um, so this meta-analysis was up to date. It was comprehensive. It wanted to um, address if the different RRT mortalities could really affect clinical outcomes of survival. Um, dialysis dependent on length of stay, and it did fail to identify any benefits. Um, but there are limited studies on long-term outcomes. Um, we would need future studies to clarify whether or not um, either of these two, um, renal replacement therapy, would confer better preservation of kidney function um, and lead to independence from dialysis for our patients. Um, so in conclusion, uh, all these trials basically pointed to the same um, thing, which was that there's no survival benefit. Um, and it's more important just to individualize um, the dialysis to your patients to provide adequate um, azotemic control, nutritional support, volume, electrolyte, and acid-base balance. And I think regardless of which type of renal replacement therapy, this can be achieved. Um, that's basically it. Thanks, Dr. Freed and everyone for coming. Thank you, Rachel. Um, any, anybody have any comments or questions? Dr. Fitzgibbons. I have a question. It may be for Rachel, but it may be for nephrology people in the room. It seems like the 15-year-old data 
you know, one of the things that they clearly showed was um, the differences with regards to fluid needs and with regards to presser needs. Um, maybe the second study you talked about. I guess, and it doesn't look like they addressed that in the recent meta-analysis. Is that still truly this, the case if we were to do a big randomized controlled trial nowadays with the techniques that we use now for CRRT and hemodialysis? Do you think there would still be that, that difference with regards to, you know, um, more pressors probably needed in the um, intermittent group versus in the CRRT group? Do you have an answer? What do you think? Do you think the technology has improved a bit? Or I mean, I think it's likely that you might require that, but I don't know if that would lead to any differences in patient outcome. Any other comments before we vote? In critically ill patients, continuous renal replacement therapy improves outcome, including survival, compared to intermittent hemodialysis. So how many think this is true? How many think it's plausible? How many think this is busted?